So now we are going to venture forth and finish the topic of action potential with the graceful assistance of Professor Pani here that formulated such a nice presentation that we can learn from. And uh, we'll just take a look at some of the images, images that he chose to, uh, to incorporate. We're going to discuss the absolute and relative refractory periods, the principles of the voltage clamp, what is it, what does it do, what do we need it for, and also a very important topic of positive and negative feedback. So by all means, let's get started with the absolute and relative refractory period. And being that I have this nice graph, why don't we review it again? Sure, why don't we? So basically what we have here is we know that we're going to cross a certain stimulation threshold, and once we do, we're going to have a response. And the sodium channels are going to open and sodium is going to flow in. And we're going to get more positive charges in, so we're going to depolarize. And at this point, sodium channels are rendered inactive. Sodium channels are rendered inactive. Sodium is no longer flowing in, but potassium is at its peak and potassium is flowing out. And we're losing positive charges and we're actually, in effect, at this point, getting to our resting membrane potential. But potassium channels are still open, which means that potassium is still flowing out, further polarizing the membrane or hyperpolarizing the membrane. And slowly, little by little, the potassium channels are going to close and we're going to resume our resting potential. And what we're really looking at, the question that we need to ask ourselves is, can I, in this uh, absolute refractory period in this period of time, can I get an action potential if I introduce more stimulation? Is it possible? Well, let's think about it. In essence, the, the action potential, action potential basically means the opening, the opening of sodium channels. What really I need to ask myself, can I open sodium channels? Well, at this point, when I passed I'm going to just switch colors arbitrarily. At this point, when I passed the stimulation threshold, sodium channels were open. Sodium channels were open, and they're, they're going to stay open here. They're going to open, and they're going to let sodium in. They're going to let sodium in. They're going to stay open until this point. So really, at this point in time, it, it, would be, it wouldn't make any sense for me to give any further stimulation because the channels are already open. The channels are already open, and I'm going to split this I'm going to split this into two stages, just to make it a little bit simpler. So in the first stage, sodium channels, sodium channels, channels are already, mind my handwriting, already open. Already open. So I can't really make them open any more than they already are. And let's see what happens in the second, in the second half of the uh, absolute refractory period. In this portion, we already said at this point that the sodium channels are rendered inactive. And we already know that inactive channels, inactive sodium channels, cannot, they cannot, they cannot be opened. They cannot be opened. They can only go to a closed, to a closed state. They can only go to a closed state. So at this point, when they're inactive, I can't really open them. Even if I apply a lot of stimulation, I can't open them. I need to wait for them to get to their closed state, which happens right around here. Right around here, they close. So this means that throughout this entire absolute refractory period, I won't be able to get another action potential, even if I apply more stimulation. I'm just going to write for the second part, for the second part, sodium, sodium channels, sodium channels are inactive, which means it doesn't matter how much stimulation I'm using, I can't open them up. I can't do it. So the answer would be during the ARP, I cannot get another action potential. No action potential is possible. So let's see what's going on with the RRP where essentially this was the threshold for our stimulation. This is the threshold that we needed that we needed to overcome, that we needed to overcome in order to get an action potential. And if we're looking at the RRP, let's just say that we're we're here. This is this is us in the RRP. And I'm wondering, can I get can I get another action potential if I apply more intensity of stimulation? Well, the sodium channels are closed, so I can actually open them because they're at their closed state. But mind this, 
at this point, in order for me to get an action potential, all I really need to do is to overcome this distance of intensity differences. But here I need to apply almost twice the intensity of the stimulation to get an action potential. So the answer to whether or not I can get an action potential on the RRP, the answer is yes. It is going to take more, more uh, stimulation intensity. More stimulation intensity. More stimulation intensity. All right. So it is possible, but it's going to be slightly more difficult. And this also explains to us a certain thing that we said in the last video, that the strength of the stimulation or the intensity of the stimulation is coded in the frequency. And what do I mean? Well, if I only have this much intensity strength, I can't really cause an action potential here. I'm going to have to wait until this recovers fully, and then I can get an action potential now. But if my intensity is very strong, let's just say this is its magnitude, the magnitude of intensity, this is the magnitude, then actually as soon as this is over and I enter my RRP, I can actually get another action potential right away because I have a lot of intensity of stimulation. So I'm going to experience these wave in close proximity or in high frequency. Very good. So this is the ARP and the RRP. We're going to keep on going, and we really want to look into the principles of a voltage clamp. And the pr principles of a voltage clamp is that we know we have we have voltage gated, voltage gated, gated, voltage gated channels. We have voltage gated channels, and these channels respond to different different um, membrane potential. If it goes up, if it goes down, maybe these. These, these channels are going to open or close. And for research purposes, we want to be able to control the membrane potential. And we want to set it to whatever we want it to be so we can, so we can investigate these ion channels. So how do we do that? First of all, we need to measure the membrane potential. So let's just say we have an axon. And this could be the axon of a giant squid. And it's an actual axon that you can see when, in your bare eye, with your bare eye. So first of all, we need to measure the membrane potential relative to the outside environment. So we have an electrode in the outside solution, an electrode inside the axon. And at this point, we can actually measure what the membrane potential is. And let's just say, for research purposes, I want the membrane potential to be set to negative 50. This is what I need to conduct my, my research right now. So what is going to happen? Let's just say I measured negative 70. Let's just say I measure negative 70. This negative 70 comes to the amplifier here. This is the voltage clamp amplifier. And the voltage clamp amplifier by itself just says, OK, I have negative 70. I need negative 50. So it is going to give us the difference. It is going to induce a plus, a plus 20 current. It is going to induce a plus 20 current and just Make up the difference. Make up the difference. And this current is going to go through here. I'll be able to see, to see the difference that I'm injecting. And this is actually going to go into the axon. And it's going to go into the membrane forcefully. So you can think of it as you can, you're, you're a little bit raping the membrane. You're actually forcing it to be at a, certain, at a certain potential. Or basically, the membrane potential is held at some sort of a controlled value independently of what the ion currents through the membrane are. Because the ions can go in and out and affect the different membrane potential. But we actually set it to what we want it to be for research purposes. And this is, this is my source, the, na the National Tsinghua University Department of Life Science in Taiwan. And they have a very nice English-oriented website, just in case you're wondering. And we're going to finish off, we're going to finish off with the icing on the cake, the positive and negative feedbacks. And just an, an idea of what a positive and negative feedback is, because a lot of people kind of wonder, oh, it is this, is it, is it that? Well, in plain English, when I'm saying positive feedback, what I mean for positive feedback is that a process, a process that fuels it itself, that fuels itself, fuels itself. This is this is not proper English, but I'm not going to fuel fuels itself. Just like let's just consider um, a snowball rolling down the hill. It's going to get 
bigger and bigger and it's going to cause itself to go faster and faster. So it's kind of feeding itself in a sense. And what, what kind, and obviously the negative is the opposite. The negative would stop a process from occurring. It would stop or slow down a process. So let's consider what we have here. At this point, once we, we are past the threshold, we have the opening, the opening of sodium channels. And we know that sodium channels are going to cause sodium to go in. So we have an increase of current of sodium inside our membrane. And we know that sodium channels are also voltage gated. So sodium channels are going to open at this point when we're depolarized. As sodium is coming in, sodium channel is going, the sodium channels are going to open because we have depolarization. What I really want to say is the more sodium comes in, the more sodium channels are going to open again because sodium channels are voltage sensitive. And the more, op the more channels open, the more sodium comes in, the more depolarization we have, and then the more channel comes in. And then you can think of it, this is our positive feedback. And our negative feedback is the delayed opening of the potassium channels. And what the potassium says is, OK, channels open. Potassium is now coming out. Potassium is basically battling the effect of the sodium and it says okay instead of causing the depolarization I'm going to hyperpolarize I'm going to counteract this big this big snowball and basically if you if you're thinking positive feedback think about sodium uh, basically fueling its own opening f sodium fueling the opening of of sodium channels and if you're thinking about negative feedback just think about Potassium crashing the party and stopping, putting a stop to it. Potassium is kind of the, the dad that comes along and says, hey, you know, turn off the light, go to bed, you're done. So this is basically the positive and negative feedbacks. And with this note, we can pretty much put the action potential to bed, but not really entirely because we're going to still be discussing the ion channels and everything that really relates, uh, relates to, uh, to action potential. But as far as what is action potential? How does it work? The terminology, we're all done with that. So we'll see you in the next lecture. And also, I'm just going to give you a little bit of a perk. And instead of just jumping to the uh, ion channels, I'm going to, to give an assortment of questions on action potentials in the next video, just to make sure that we know what we need to know. See you in the questions article.